at the head of your mat. You're gonna take just a gently folded blanket. If you don't need a folded blanket under your head, you don't have to do that as well. And something else that I've been uh, learning because I'm always studying and always practicing with a beginner's mind is when you place like a blanket or something to support your head, you have <clears throat> where C7 is on the back bottom of your neck, right where the top of the shoulders meet the neck, that uh, bumpy bone. You wanna try to have the blanket at least supporting that bone or your prop, because if you just let your head hang loose with the support, it's not really uh, creating structural integrity. And so we wanna make sure that the blanket's tucked up at least to the top edge of that uh, bone and just see how that works for you today, if that makes you feel a little bit more supported or not. So I'm gonna place the blanket at the um, head of my bolster, and then I'm gonna have my black vertical on my mat so that we can place our feet on it. The bolster is gonna come up flush against the sit bones, otherwise just a fist distance away from it if you have any type of a hormonal dysfunction of any sort. And you're just gonna puff your chest, fingers to the side of your hips, open up your heart, lean back onto the bolster, nice and centered along the spine, and then bring the block in and you'll place your feet in bound angle, Baddha Konasana. And since you have extra blocks at home, which is so nice, Mary Ellen, if this is too much strain with allowing the knees to drop towards the earth, you're just gonna tuck a block under each thigh on the right side and left, or maybe just under your knee. You're gonna find where you need it most. I enjoy the fact that it's opening me up in my center and my pelvis so I could release and become a little bit more stable today. Get out the monkey mind. So externally rotate the upper arms, palms are open to receive. And just feel your breath here. We're gonna focus on Andama Swasa, the lower abdomen breathing. So picture yourself filling up this navel center. And then just soften into your mind's eye so that we can center ourselves today. Becoming aware of the body, becoming aware of the breath, becoming aware of the mind. Giving yourself that permission to breathe deeply into any area that's calling out for attention most. Maybe it's your foot, maybe it's your thigh, maybe it's the heart and you're holding on to something or clinging to a thought or an idea. And gently push your feet together on top of your blocks just to bring your awareness to the earth element through the legs. Feel the moving down of your shoulder blades. Feel the shoulder blades going in towards the body and down. This opens up the front of the body, the heart center. And just notice what's troubling you. And notice what's making you happy today. And instead of feeding the troubles or the thought process is something that is not, give yourself permission to feed into what is. And fill up the vessel or the body. The vessel could be your mind. The vessel could be a joint in the body or a muscle. Fill it up with what makes you happy today. The simplicity of a practice doesn't need to be too much or too little. It just needs to be in the present moment for what is. So embrace that thought. Embrace what you see behind your closed eyes, whether it's colors or a picture or a vision or words. 
And just give yourself permission to embrace it all today. Let's create a sankalpa for our practice by bringing our palms together in front of our heart center. Pushing the right side of the palm into the left and the left into the right. Pushing all five fingertips into each other just to wake up that energy, that prana that we have within us so that it could surround us and also vibrate out into the universe. Feel the edges of the palm of the hand from the pinky side down into the center of the palm, into the thumb tip, and then straightening each finger as you push each finger, the pointers into each other, maybe even rolling them and rocking them side to side, and then the middle fingers. And then the ring fingers, and then the pinky fingers. And then back into the strength of the thumb, which is the fire element. We need fire to transform and move forward into our days and our lives so that we can feel that energy, of lightness, of motivation, of inspiration. And then soften and create that, in, that intention, that sankalpa, by repeating it three times behind your closed eyelids yourself. The gaze is downward towards the tip of the uh, nose, behind those closed eyes. And then let's dedicate our practice to each other for showing up on our mat today. Life is busy and it's nice to know that we have this space to practice together in. And then we'll gently say the words namaste, namaste, honoring each other with loving kindness today. And then blinking the eyes open, gazing at the tips of your fingers, which brings your awareness now to the physical body. When our eyes were closed, we were our awareness was internal. Now this is external. And then release the hands down. Take your hands behind your knees and just straighten and bring the feet to the earth. Move the block away and then just straighten the legs on the floor. Open up the palms to receive on the earth so that the forearms are coming down. And if that's ever uncomfortable for you, you can place your blocks next to your bolster and place your forearms on the blocks to raise the floor to greet you where you're at. You pick. Let's focus on this lower abdominal breathing now. You can keep the arms on the ground, but if you need some guidance, you can place your palms over the lower abdomen, just below the belly button, middle fingers touch. The rest of the fingers are spread wide and you're gonna breathe into that space behind the hands, hopefully, so that the middle fingers move away from each other on the in-breath, like a balloon filling up. And then on the out-breath, narrowing that space, absorbing it towards the lumbar, the lower back, and the exhalation. Inhaling, expanding. And exhale, releasing. And you're gonna continue that for a few rounds as I give you a little bit more information on what Ajama Swasa is. Ajama Swasa Pranayama consists of an inhalation through both nostrils into the lower lungs. When practiced with a soft abdomen, this Pranayama creates a balloon-like expansion of the abdominal cavity. So feel that balloon-like expansion. Ajama means lower and refers to the lowest part of the torso and the lowest portion of the lungs which is the focus of this pranayama. Ajama also refers to that which is stable and primordial, which are qualities cultivated by this pranayama. And swasa means breath and also refers to the life force energy. Therefore, this breath practice 
allows for the subtle energy flow that cultivates stability and grounding in the lowest part of the lungs and torso and more globally throughout your entire being. The balloon-like expansion of the lower belly reminds us of Ganesh, the deity. This pranayama evokes Ganesh's powerful qualities of safety, protection, security, and primi primordial being. And now we're gonna practice it with a firm abdomen. So on the exhalation, engage Mula Bandha, the root lock, lifting up, hugging in through the uh, core of the body, the floor of the body. And also engage Uddiyana Bandha, the navel lock. Keep that engagement, a very subtle form of the engagement, so nothing too extreme. And now you're gonna practice Adhyama Swasa here with this firm belly. And this time you're gonna sense the pressure of the firm abdominal walls and feel how it almost expands into the lower back, protecting the lower back. So even when you're doing any type of sport and you even your golf swing, for example, sometimes when you engage Mulan Uddiyana Bandha and then you breathe into that swing, if you keep that engagement, protecting your lower back, you're not gonna tweak anything. Think about the abdominal area and how it increases circulation. And this also then will help with the supply of nutrients to release waste products from the entire abdominal cavity. The parasympathetic nervous system is activated, which optimizes the functioning of the enteric nervous system within the digestive system, supporting the release of serotonin while supporting immunity. Ajama Swasa. On the next exhalation, give yourself permission to just breathe a natural rhythm. Breathing naturally. We're going to inhale now, bend the knees. We're gonna roll off to either side and move the prop out of the way. And we're gonna to come to a seated position. I'm gonna sit on the edge of my blanket just to lift my hips up a little bit more for ease. And you're gonna sit in Sukhasana, easy pose. A great way to get into easy pose is to stretch your legs out long in front of you. Cross mid shin with your legs and then pull those feet in and they're naturally aligned underneath the knees. Good, we're gonna inhale now, bring your hands out to the side. Inhale, sweep the palms open and up and overhead. Exhale, bring the right arm down alongside the right hip and walk it out to the side into a lateral bend. Look down at your thumb and push into the earth with your right hand. Tuck the chin into your right shoulder. A nice deep breath here into Ajama Swasa. And try to breathe into lower abdominal balloon-like breath throughout your practice. Notice the difference with the soft abdomen here, or if you engage Mula and Uniana Banda with a hard abdomen. And see what works best for you today. Inhale, lift up through the top arm. And exhale, reach the arms overhead. This time, binding the hands, get into the knuckles all the way through the webbing. Turn the palms up, arms overhead, and just sway your hips from side to side. Sway your ribs, I should say, from side to side. Nice. It's almost like a hula hooping, seated. And then come back to stillness. Release the hands so they face each other. Bring the left arm down towards the earth outside the hip. Walk it out to the side. Reach the top arm overhead and keep the extension through the palm of the hand. 
look down at your left hand and push into the earth so it fires up the rib cage. Extension, tuck your chin into your left shoulder. And again, practice a soft belly or a hard belly with Adhyama Swasa, lower abdominal breathing. Maybe this is waking you up already. Call that serotonin. And then turn the top arm, the right arm, pin it in. Rotate the tricep in towards the head. The back of the upper arm. Inhale, lift up through the top arm. And we're going to go into a twist. Twisting to the right. Take your uh, left hand to the outside of the right knee. Bring your fingertips behind, straight behind your butt cheeks. You might even want to put your hand on a block behind you if you're leaning too far back so that the torso is lifted. You can be in an open twist too, where the left arm goes into the left shin, especially if you have low back issues. An open twist is more beneficial. Inhale and exhale here. Hollow out the navel on the exhalation. Look over your back shoulder to release the paths, stem scars or shadows accepting what was so that you can move into what is. Practice your Adama Swasa here and see if it's challenging to do a full belly breath with a twist. Look over your front shoulder and tuck your chin into your front shoulder and just notice how it releases the neck. Push down into the pinky side of the feet. Look up back to center, come back to center with your torso and we'll do the other side. Rotating now to the left, right hand to the outside of the right, a left knee or an open twist. And when I'm doing an open twist, I'm also pushing my hand just like I would if I was in a closed twist. Look into the past over your back shoulder and pin your back shoulder in towards the body. So take your left shoulder and pin it towards the spine as if you took a safety pin. Look over your right shoulder now and practice your belly breath, low abdominal breathing, swasa, adhyama swasa. Hard belly and soft. Notice what happens to the lower back with each variation. Come back to center. Take your arms out to the side in a T and really reach from the shoulders to the elbows to the wrists to the fingers. It's all one extension of the spine. Really reach away through the middle finger. Fire up those underarms. Turn the palms up and push the palms away. Push, 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 push especially the bottom of the palm. Push the palms down to the top now of the palm. Push away, really reach it away. Notice if there's any aches and pains. Extend the thumb out to the side. Straighten the hands again. And now we're gonna go into Garudasana arm, eagle arm, taking the right arm underneath the left. Really glue the elbows together here and lift the elbows up and broaden the upper back. Continue with your Adama Swasa if you're able to. You can incorporate Ujjayi Pranayam here too in the back of the throat, the vibration of the back of the throat is stimulating, enlightening, energizing. Tuck the elbows now into the chest and round the upper back, tucking the chin into the chest, moving the navel all the way back to the spine. Inhaling, opening up, almost like a cat cow back. Reaching the elbows up towards the sky to the best of your ability, reaching the throat up towards the sky. Exhaling, rounding the back into a cat stretch. Pulling the navel towards the spine, tucking the chin. Inhaling, expanding, opening up the chest again. Gluing those elbows together. One more time, exhaling, rounding. 
Come back to center with the elbows and now taking the elbows over to the right. The torso remains centered. So really pull that left rib cage to the left and look straight ahead and then tilt your left ear to your left shoulder. So the elbows are moving towards the right and the ear is the left ear is moving towards the left shoulder, tilting the head. Bring the head back up to center, arms back to center. Sweep the arms open, opening the chest to the heavens. Let's do the other side, left arm under the right. Glue the elbows together. Baradasana arms, eagle arms. Really feel the fierceness of the eagle, but yet the lightness and fluidity of the flight. Inhale, lift the elbows up. Reach the chest up towards the sky into a cow tilt in the upper back or a dog tilt. And then exhale, rounding into that cat stretch in the upper back, pulling the elbows in towards the chest, tucking the chin in. Push down through the outside of the pinky toe of the feet. Inhaling, opening the chest up. Exhale, closing the chest, <laughs> protecting yourself for negativity so you can invoke some positivity both inwards and outwards. Inhaling, opening up the heart. Take in what you need to receive from the universe today for positivity. One more time, rounding through the upper back, pulling the navel in. Inhale, come back to center. This time, take those glued elbows and pull them over towards the left. The torso moves towards the right a little bit, just through the right rib cage to center yourself. Push down in the outside of the feet, down to the outer hip. Exhale, tilt the head to the right, right ear to the right shoulder. Glue the elbows together. Feel where you need to feel it. Do the elbows need to lift up a little bit more? Do they need to move down a little bit more? You pick. Pull the navel in. Pull the pelvic floor up and in. Mula and Uddiyana Bandha. And breathe into your lower abdomen. Adhyama Swasa. Come back to center with the head, with the arms. Release. Take your legs, switch your legs. You can take them out and crisscross at the mid shin. Pull the feet in, and we're just going to rock side to side and do some hip circles. So moving now, forward and back. Go into Ujjayi Pranayama, ocean breath at the back of the throat. Maybe combined with Adhyama Swasa with a hard belly or a soft belly. Go back into the opposite direction now, circle. Maybe you're comfortable and you just wanna go side to side. You pick. A good way to get out of our head is to move, creating some circles in one way, clockwise and counter just to offset the monkey chatter, the vrittis and into the mind, the chatter of the mind. Come back to center, excellent. Move your props off to the side. Let's come on to all fours. Take your blocks to the head of your mat. We're gonna open up our chest and go into puppy dog. She's so, she's so, san, she's so, she's so sana, I think is what it's called. Line up your blocks so they're shoulders distance apart in front of you. You're gonna take one elbow, Onto each edge of the block, lift your hips up, walk your knees back, almost like into a tabletop position. You want to try to have your knees underneath your hips. So when I move backwards, I'm going to scoot my knees back. I don't want them too far back or too far forward. And just feel the forehead onto the earth between the blocks and then roll, reach the underarms, the eyes of the heart towards the earth, just to the best of your ability. Bring your palms together, 
and then move the forearms forward, palms forward, and then exhale them up. You can tuck your toes under for stability or try to flatten through the ankles if you're able to. That's variation three. Reaching the heart towards the earth, the underarms. Be mindful of the movements as you push the right palm into the left and the left into the right. Inhale now, walk your knees forward. It helps with coming up. Back into tabletop. Put your palms onto the blocks themselves. Attach the blocks to each other, connect them so there's no space in between them. Inhale, we're gonna go into thread the needle. Take your right hand, reach it and follow with your eyes all the way up to the sky. And then exhale, thread the needle between the arms. Push the blocks forward, your hand. Roll to the back of the head, if you're able to. The arm is extending overhead, left arm. Inhale back to center, this time palms on the floor. Take the left arm, sweep it out to the side, follow with your eyes. Exhale, thread the needle. Threading the left arm through, push down into the right palm. Push down into the left ankle and then the right ankle. Try to not crisscross your feet, keep them centered, hips distance apart. Allow the right hip to follow the movement of the twist. You don't have to square off your hips here. You don't want to jam into your back, but release the back. Inhale back into center. Let's go into puppy dog without the blocks. Walk your palms all the way forward, bring your forearms down. Go to your forehead and then slither onto your nose and then your chin. Maybe you want to stay on your forehead. That's variation one. Going to the chin, stretching the arms forward is variation three. You can be on your nose, your forehead, or maybe your chin. The arm position varies. You can have your arms straight ahead. You can have go post arms. You can have your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, push back up into tabletop. Let's go into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Watch your hands one palm, pit, palm print forward. Engage the abdominal area, really nice hard belly here. Tuck your toes under, lift up, Adho Mukha. Let's pedal out the feet. Bring the left heel down, keep the hips lifted on both sides. Pin the upper arm bones in, anchor down to the flesh of the thumb and the forefinger, the bottom center of the palm, and the bottom knuckle of the middle finger. Feel the hands. Sway your hips from side to side with the left heel down, right heel lifted. Switch sides, come back to center. Move the right heel down, pin the upper arm bones in. Engage through the abdomen. Hug into the side waist. And now try to rock back and forth with the left heel up and the right heel down. It's easier to do if you keep your hips stabilized and you're just moving side to side. Come back to center, widen your feet so they're mat distance apart. Look forward without moving the hands or the feet. Look forward and lift your collarbones towards your thumbs. Feel that in your upper most part of your back between your scapula, your shoulder blades. Pin the upper arm bones in. Keep the gaze steady, maybe at your thumbs. You can look gaze forward, but don't lift the head too much to hurt the back of the neck. Reach through the collarbones, bend the knees, but notice don't move your chest, just bend the knees. Learning to move from specific body parts is key in a yoga practice. Exhale, straighten the heels, moving them back and down. Release the head, shake the head out, yes and no a few times. Breathe here into Adama Swasa. Head is neutral. Inhale through the lower abdomen. 
Exhale through the lower abdomen. Fill up that balloon like the belly of Ganesh. Lift through the bottom of the pelvis and Mula Bandha at the bottom of the exhalation. Engage Uddiyana Bandha, navel lock. Inhale, look forward, bring your feet together, lift your right leg up towards the sky. Ekapada Adho Mukha Svanasana. You can always go into child's pose if you need a break. Stack your hips, one hip on top of the bottom, right hip on top of the left and pin your left hip in. I'm gazing at the big toe of my left foot here and pushing down evenly through both hands. Inhale, square off your hips, look forward, bend your knee and bring it forward into a low lunge. Bring your back knee down for a moment. You can frame your front foot with your blocks if you need support and lift the chest up. Good. Reach the arms overhead, push down through the back foot, go post arms. Really draw the shoulders down the back, lift the throat up towards the sky, and then extend the arms alongside the ears. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, engage your left buttock muscle. Exhale, hands down. We're gonna switch sides. We can hop switch, jump switch, or we can move slowly. Tuck your back toes under and switch legs. Bring the right leg down towards the earth. Flatten the back shin. This time come up, sweep the arms forward and up. See the difference, engagement, sweep. Keeping that low abdominal breath here, Adhyama Swasa. Exhale, hands down, and you're gonna jump switch again. So now the right foot's forward. Let's go into a high lunge, lift the back kneecap up, hips up. Bring your hands to the top of the front knee, and then reach them forward and up. Use that momentum, anchor down through the back leg, reach forward and up. You can keep your arms straight, or maybe you wanna go into eagle arms, which we've been practicing. Open the arms into a T. Sweep the left arm under the right. Left arm's on the bottom. This helps wrap the rib cage forward. Reach back through the back leg. Straighten the back leg. Sit down with the pelvis between the legs. Lift the elbows up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Step back into downward dog. Inhale, look forward, lift the left leg up. I'm sorry, keep the head neutral, don't look forward. Lift the left leg up, one-legged ekapada, and stack the left hip over the right. Pin the right outer hip in, push it down strongly through the left palm, squaring off the shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, square off the hip, bring the left leg forward, this time into a high lunge. Anchor down through both feet, especially the back. Lift the chest up, sweep the arms forward and up. Variation one, variation two, right arm under left, eagle arms. Strong back leg, that's your anchor leg. Reach strongly back to the inner knee, to the inner ankle. Glue the front elbows together. Exhale, reach the hands down to frame the front foot. Lift the back leg up and bring it forward into a forward fold. Uttanasana. Hang into your rag doll here. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can hold your elbows or let the hands drape on the floor. Knees can be bent if you need them to be. And breathe into Adhyama Swasa. <clears throat> Excuse me. See if it's challenging since the abdomen's pressing into the thighs. Create a hard belly here. Lift through the root lock, Mula Bandha, and then the navel lock, Uddiyana Bandha. Notice how the body drops a little bit more. 
and you're able to control the breath now a little bit more easily by bring it, breathing into the back body with a hard belly in Adhyama Swasa. Bring your hands down to the ground and let's just paint the floor with our hands. Painting as if you're drawing a picture of your life story as you want to move forward. And then follow the sway as you bend the knees, following the sway as you bring the arms up and then overhead. Breathing and feeling here. Breath, body, and mind. And then come into Tadasana, mountain pose. <clears throat> feet can touch, big toes, inner edges of the feet, a little bit of space between the heels. And lift all 10 toes up, close your eyes. Spread all 10 toes. Big toe away from pinky. And notice your balance if there's a balance issue. We're gonna come down to the ground now, inhaling, reaching the arms open and overhead, going to a standing back bend, Anuvitanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, hands on shins, push the chest forward, straighten the torso. Half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Lift through the back of the sit bones. Exhale, tuck the chins in, Uttanasana forward fold. Again, create a hard belly by engaging Mula and Uddiyana Bandha. Helps with the forward fold. Exhale, step the right foot back and then the left into plank, Palangasana. Push into the inner hand, lift the collarbones forward. Exhale, knees down, sit back into Balasana, child's pose. Bring the widow's peak of the forehead to a block or the earth. We're going to breathe into Adhyama Swasa here. Lower abdominal breath. Try it with a soft belly. Notice how it's a little more challenging because there's no space. And now go into the hard belly, engaging Mula, the root lock. And then Uddiyana, the navel lock. And then breathe into the lower abdomen with the locks. Allow the breath to come back to its natural rhythm. Push yourself up, hands under shoulders into a seated position. We're gonna go into Ustrasana, camel pose. Bring your blocks next to your knees on the high height. Tuck your back toes under. Try to keep the hips stacked over the knees when you're in the full pose. But to start, we're gonna lean back, engaging the abdominal muscles. Reach for the left heel. Bring the right arm to the, right, to the left shoulder. Right arm crosses over. Hold your left shoulder like you're hugging yourself. So I'm looking to my left. Keep your hand on your heel and then sweep the right hand across the chest, opening the chest to the sky and then lift the arm up. Reach the arm alongside the ear, pin it in. Variation two. Open the throat towards the sky, reaching the hips forward, reach the tailbone down. Inhale, come back to center. Reach the right hand to the right heel. Hug yourself with your left hand. Look over towards the right. Now inhale, rotate the chest as you drape the hand across the chest to open the arm up towards the sky. Then alongside the ear, then the throat up and back. Inhale back up to center. Stick with that, or if you're comfortable with 
both hands, you're gonna lean back a little bit, reach for the heels, open the chest up towards the sky and the thighs forward. We're gonna pick the variation that you can breathe into for six full breaths. Lower abdominal breathing. Find if a soft belly works for you here because you're nice and open in the front versus a hard belly. Maybe a hard belly helps you feel more supported in the curve of your upper back moving towards the lower back. Push down through the toes, lift up through the center of the heart. To come out, take one hand to your hip, then the other, and then let's sit back on our heels into Varasana, Harrow's Pose. Widen the feet so the heels are to the outside of the hips. Feet are flat on the ground, pointing back. Massage the toes. Massage the whole bottom of the foot with your knuckles. Hold your feet and just sway from side to side. Keep the hips down. If you need support underneath your hips, you can place your blanket or a block. Sometimes a little bit of a tuck of a blanket. It's not too high, not too low. Just right under the tailbone. Gives you a little bit more stability. And let's do those hip circles. Try to keep your hips down. So you're just rotating from the abdomen up. And then the opposite way. I'm holding my heels here so that my body doesn't tip forward. And then come back to center. We're gonna go into rabbit, Sasangasana. I'm gonna bring my forehead to the ground, holding my heels on my feet. If your hands uh, move up to your ankles or your shins, that's perfectly acceptable. Roll to the forehead, then the widow's peak, and then the top of the head holding the legs where they land, and lift the hips up. Stretching through the back of the neck, so be mindful. Don't collapse in the head. Lift the shoulders up. See if you could breathe into the lower abdominal breath here. Adama Swasa. If you can't, that's fine. Let's see if you can find ease. Come back to center, moving the hips back and down. We're gonna cross our legs behind us, our shins, and sit back onto our butts. Winding down now, going into our inversion. making good time for you. We're gonna go into bridge pose, using some muscle action to come down to the ground. Walk your feet in towards your butt, touching the back of your ankle with your middle finger. Grab the outer edge of your mat and pull on it to draw the shoulder blades down. Notice how that puffs the chest up. Keeping the puff of the chest up. Inhale, lift the hips up. Pull the outer edges of the mat to tuck the shoulders under. Variation two is bind the fingers all the way up through the webbing. Both hands and into yoga mudra behind the back. Lift the outer hips, push into the center of the heel of the foot. If you can, turn the toes in, heels out. Anchor down through the mound of the big toe. Feel the inner thighs move towards each other and down. Inner thighs in and down. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly release the hand. Unravel the upper chest and then the tailbone. We're gonna do that two more times and we're gonna work with breathing into 
the movement. Turn the big toes in, heels out, touch the back of the ankle. <coughs> Excuse me. Pause. Get in touch with the lower abdominal breath, Adhyama Swata. Hold the outer edges of your mat, pull on them. Inhale, tuck and lift the hips up. Reach the tailbone towards the back of the knee. Roll your shoulders under a little bit more and bind the hands. You can go down or lift on the tip of your toes, tuck your thumbs underneath your hips, walk your feet in, and support yourself in a higher bridge. Inner thighs move in and down. From here, if you want to lift one leg up and then the other. You can go in Vipariti, turn Karani. Supported, push down through the forearm, uh, push down through the back of the upper arm. Toes <laughs> reach up straight up from the forehead, zipper the legs together. For, flounce your to toes so they're flexed and pointed at the same time. Chest moves towards the chin. Keep the base strong like a kickstand. Elbows are pinning in towards the body to help with the support of the weight of your body. Adam Adyama Swasa here. Inhale to the count of four in your lower abdomen. Exhale to four. Two more times. Lift the hips up. See if we can go into plow pose with a wide leg. Can support the upper back now. Push the palms in to the upper back. To come out, hold the outside of your mat. Straighten the legs over the face and try to roll as slowly as you can down to the ground. Bend the knees, touch the feet to the floor, and pause. Swivel the hips side to side. We're gonna windshield, windshield wiper our legs. Widen your feet so they're mat distance apart. Inhale and bring the knees down to the right on the exhalation. Inhale back up to center. Exhale, knees down to the left. Inhale back to center. This time at the right side, take your right leg, put it on top of your left knee and push if you're adjusting yourself pulling the skin and the knee down and away with the right foot. Keeping in this position, staying in this position, we're gonna tuck the tailbone, a little bit of a pelvic tilt movement here. Inhale, slowly move through the left butt cheek, engaging the muscle, bringing the tailbone in, pelvic tilt. Really feel the opening in the front of the hip flexor here on the left side. Exhale, soften through the inner groins, releasing the tailbone. Again, one more time, inhaling. And then exhale. Come back to center, release the top foot, the right foot. Square off your hip, exhale. Windmill the knees to the left. Take your left foot on top of your right knee. As if you're tractioning yourself, feel the skin move away and down through the kneecap. Pelvic tilt, inhale, engaging the right buttocks. 
Tailbone in and forward, opening up the right hip flexor. Exhale, softening through the tailbone now. Releasing. One more time, inhaling. Exhale, releasing. Bring the legs back to center. Straighten the legs on the floor. Inhale, bring the right knee into the chest. Exhale, right leg up to the sky. Hold behind the left, the right thigh. Point the foot. And then rotate the foot clockwise. And then counterclockwise. Supine pigeon, take the right leg across the left knee. Bring the left knee towards the chest. Threading the needle through the leg, pulling the thigh in. Variation two is hold the top of the shin and lift the chest and tuck the chin. Rounding through the upper body to release the lower back that much more. Pull the right knee cap away, left knee cap in. Release the leg, other side, straighten the right leg, bend the left knee in towards the chest. Softening the breath here, letting go of any type of pranayama, just a natural rhythm of breathing. Straighten the left leg up, binding the hands between the thighs, behind the thighs and push into your hands as you pull your hands forward. Rotate the left foot one way, and then the other. Supine pigeon, bend the right knee, drape the left foot over towards the right, thread the needles through, hold the back of the thigh. Inhale. <clears throat> pull the right knee towards the face. Exhale, pull the left knee away from the face. If your left foot is on your thigh, on the skin, push the foot into the thigh. Feel the activation there. Variation two, bind the hands over the right shin, lift the chest and the chin up. Engage Mula and Uddiyana Banda here if you can. Otherwise, don't worry. Soften. Release the bind. Release the legs. Preparing for Shavasana. Stretch the legs out. If you want to take your blanket, it's easy reach. Take the folded edge. Put it underneath C7, the bony part of the back of the neck. For support, you could also roll in the bottom edge for a neck roll. Whatever is easiest for you with mindfulness. If the low back feels tweaked, place one block under each knee or your bolster. But if you don't have a bolster, sometimes it's nice to know what to do with the blocks. Let's close our eyes here. Again, find simplicity in the practice. So you can practice anywhere at any time. Doesn't have to be 60 minutes, 90 minutes. It could be just five minutes. Take your practice everywhere. As you inhale and exhale, picture yourself resting on a beach in the sand. You're laying on a towel and the towel's on top of the sand as you place your body on the towel. With every exhalation, feel yourself becoming cocooned in the sand, cocooned in a space that's yours and yours alone. 
this area of the body is protected. The space of your body and mind from outside interference or noise. You hear the sounds of the water going up onto shore, the tide comes in. Feel the breeze tickling the skin. You feel the exhalation as the tide moves away from the shore. Feel the release of that tickle on the skin melting away through the fingertips and the tips of the toes and the soles of the feet. Give yourself that permission to let the breeze touch you, but not affect you. As the exhalation moves the body away, from the mind chatter and the inhalation stimulates and energizes the mind clarity. As you inhale and exhale, release into the lower abdomen. Get a lot of work here today. Sense a strength in the standing of your power. Sense the strength of Ganesh. It was a part of your practice today through lower abdominal breathing. Adama Swasa. Sense the strength of just being you. Sometimes we don't need much. We think we do. But all those answers are inside of us. Just waiting. The sense of safety, protection, security, it's all there within so that it could be spread without. Feel the power of your stance, the strength of your leg, the strength of your pelvis, the hips, the tailbone, the sacrum, the torso. Feel the rele release of the ribs softly towards the earth. As you inhale and exhale up and out through the crown of the head. And for the next few brief moments, just breathe. Keeping your eyes closed on the next inhalation, becoming aware of the sensations of your physical body and the space that you occupy. Gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. Gently turn your wrists in gentle circles and your ankles in circles. Gently and slowly moving your head from side to side on your breath. And take your tongue and swish it around your teeth three times. And then swallow. 
tasting the practice today. The pure loving kindness, stability, protection, and strength. Bring your palms together. Rub them vigorously to create heat and warmth. Place those palms over your eyes. Opening your eyes into the warmth and darkness. And just massage all over the head. Through the tops of the head, the scalp, the back of the head. Behind the ears, up and down. And then take your fingertips and just grab your earlobes and just flick. Anything left over, move it away. Roll on over to your side, hugging your knees into your chest first, and let the head come up last as you push yourself to seated when you're ready. We'll add the class with the chant of Om to seal off our practice today. Eyes at the bottom for support. Ooh is to feel the goodness in your being and mm, reverberate the sense of loving kindness out through the mouth and the nose, the eyes and the ears. Join me if you wish, or just bathe in its vibration. Take an inhale and exhale, and we'll exhale on the second. We'll chant on the second exhalation. Take an inhale and exhale. Inhale and chant. Uh... Namaste. Thank you for joining me today.